Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Check here, and welcome back to some more Star Wars Galaxies. Now, this is actually a couple of days after I recorded part one of this. I did record part two. Wow, it's really dark in here. But the game recorded, fraps messed up or something, it recorded really, really dark, and it actually seems like the game is just generally darker now for some reason. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on or why, but we're gonna go ahead and finish up the guide. I wanted to show, oh, hello Imperial Probe Droid. I wanted to show the mission system and how to make some bucks, some quick cash, uh, early in the game. All right, so you just made a character, you've messed around with the combat maybe a little bit, or maybe you wanna just start doing missions, you had a couple buddies. I flew away from Tatooine, we're on Corellia now. Actually, this is CNET, Coronet. All right, let's see here. We need to find a mission terminal, so hit M to open your map, and just start looking for something in white that says mission terminal. It may take a minute for your map to update like mine. There are lots of different types of mission terminals. There's actually one right over here. There's a, this is a creature mission terminal for hunting creatures and doing recon missions and whatnot. Uh, normally combat related to these yellow ones. This right here is a artisan terminal for making stuff. If you're a crafter and wanna make some quick bucks. Uh, I've never actually done those because I'm not a crafter. So mission terminal, this is a generic one. There's mission terminals for bounty hunters. Once you become a bounty hunter, there's mission terminals for the rebels, the Imperials. Um, so lots of ways you can make money. So go ahead and we'll click, double click the mission terminal. They're in every major city. And even most of the small ones have them as well. Uh, destroy and deliver. Now, if your skills are really lacking in combat and you're in a high level area, say you're on you flew to Dantooine or something and you're just a noob, you may not see destroy missions because you don't have the combat capability to complete them, so they're not gonna even show you the tab. Uh, but if you're in Moss Eisley or CNET or any of the starter cities, you'll definitely see a destroy mission. Uh, this is based on your combat capability with the weapon you have equipped. Now, the more people you have in your group, the higher level missions you can get up to that planet's cap or that mission terminal's cap. So, we're gonna go ahead and take a kind of a cheesy mission here. Where are we? Let's see. Do, do, do. We're southern portion of Coronet. Alright. So, let's go ahead and take. Oh, screw it. We'll just take this, this one right here. It's close, relatively close in the northeast. We'll accept a mission. You can take up to two missions. I recommend you take them going the same direction. And if you're playing with a group, have your entire group take missions going the same direction. That way you don't have to crisscross the city over and over again. All right, we'll just take two of those. Now, as you can see, I've got two waypoints. Now, if you just started the game, you're not gonna have your waypoint monitor open. This is something you have to turn on by going into your settings options button. Go down to miscellaneous and flick on show on-screen waypoint monitor. There you go, and it'll flick this sucker on. It's so useful. Now, what we do when we're running just missions, trying to make some money in a group, we'll have everybody call out their closest mission. Now, I would say I have 15, 1,500. That's my closest mission. Somebody might say, well, I've got 800. All right, well, we'll all go run the closest mission. So, I'm actually going the wrong way. The mission is this way. I'm gonna pull out my bike. I saw that explosion. My bike is actually damaged. The more times you pull it out, and the longer you own it, the more damage it'll take, and you'll have to repair it or replace it. It's kind of on fire, so. All right. Let's get rolling. The swoop bike, this particular swoop bike, uh, these are the fastest vehicles in the game. Now, there's another type of speeder bike, actually called the speeder bike. I think it looks better, personally, but... It is a little bit slower. Then there's the starting vehicle, which new players will start as a deed in their backpack. Uh, I believe I showed how to call vehicles in the first episode, but just in case I didn't, let me get outside of town and I will show how vehicles work. Since they're nice enough on the, uh, the server right now to give them to you, this is actually a dead end. I need to get out of town. Looks like there's an exit right here. There we go. All right, so if you just made your character, you should see a deed. It might look something kind of like this item here. It'll say uh, X25 or something. I don't remember what the speeder car is called that you start with, but uh, what you do is you right click it and you say use. I think it's use. It's been a while since I've used one of these deeds. And it'll put it in your data pad, which is down here. Or you can hit P. 
Under data, there's my swoop bike. Now I can double click this to spawn my vehicle. Or you can grab it, drag it, and drop it up to your bar like I've got here, and then just hit the button and it'll spawn your vehicle in so you can drive around the world a little faster. Now, when we do hunting, and we've got a nice mix of players that uh, I've been playing with in the community and then my core group of people that I play with, we like to walk. Once we get to our first mission, we'll walk to all the rest, and we'll pretty much just hunt creatures en route from mission to mission to get more combat experience to allow our scouts to harvest more resources, and it just makes everybody get more experience in general if we just hunt the random stuff we find and we come across. Now, another warning. As you can see, there's a diseased rel or welt right here. He came up on my radar as red. That means that he will aggro and it will attack you if you come nearby. Yellow will not. Red will aggro and try to kill you. Now, some creatures are so evil that once they knock you out, instead of just trying to knock you out three times or knocking you out once and then leaving you alone, they will knock you out once and then come up and do a finishing blow on you and kill you. So be careful of that. All right, so we're still heading toward our objective. It looks like it's updated. Sometimes missions will update and change where they're at when they spawn in. Looks like this mission spawned right in the middle of a player town. The big yellow beam of light is actually your waypoint on the world space. Meet lump loons. So we got some criminals here. That's my mission, take out the criminals. So right now he's yellow to me because I don't have my weapon equipped. But once I equip my weapon, he's still yellow to me. He didn't update. Or maybe he is just that tough. Alright, well let's drop him. He's not all that tough. So what I did was I used my ability Body Shot 2, which is a pistol ability in the Marksman Tree that I unlocked I think around tier 3 or 4. And what that does is it focuses on the red bar. Once one of the bars go to zero, you'll actually knock the target out. Walk up here, double click him to loot. I got some random item. You'll get a lot of junk off of these guys, like I just got another satchel. Now, when you're doing missions, just be aware. If you shoot the um, the banner, you're going to piss off everything that's guarding the banner. So, if they don't normally work in groups, don't shoot the banner until you've killed all the guards. So let's go ahead and shoot these guys. Get, get, get off here. Pistols are very close range weapons. Uh, carbines, you get your mid-range, and then rifles are your nice long-range, and the, you want to stay in your weapon's optimal range to get the best accuracy, if possible. So, riflemen, if you're in a group, may want to stay back and lay down and set up their shot at range. Here's my pistol. We can actually see my pistol's optimum range is 20 meters. Is ideal. I get no bonus at... Uh, point blank, there's no negative, and then at max range, which is 64 meters, I have a negative 70 to accuracy. Which, for a rifle, they would actually have a bonus at that range. Okay, so let's take out the objective. The objective is to blow up this banner. So just keep shooting at it. Now, the pistol that I have here is an FWG-5. It's very fast. It's decently damaged. This isn't the best one of it. I actually kind of bought a, uh, a bargain bin FWG. Come on, take it out. Now, while you're shooting these, more enemies can spawn. You'll normally see them spawn around a quarter to the halfway mark. It's a little random. Uh, if you're fast enough on the spawn for creatures, you can hit the peace button, and sometimes they won't all come after you. But the majority of the time I found, they'll just rush one of the people firing it firing at it, which can be a big problem if you end up getting like a spawn of seven creatures with a lot of health, all going after one person. Um, that's why I really like mission running as a group. Uh, because one, you have the backup just in case that happens. It's a lot more fun just to be able to chat and bullshit around with people. So we can crouch to get a little more accuracy. Not that we're going to have a trouble hitting this banner. Get the war face on. Oh, he didn't update his war face. Hmm. I wonder if I'm just lagged. Shouldn't be though, it's pretty early in the morning. Mood none. No such mood, what do you mean? 
There we go. Alright, so this objective is just about dead. Hey, and I was paid 1,630 credits, which I put into my bank account. I bought a few items, so I'm a little bit poorer than I was last night. And there you go, that is mission running in a nutshell. Now, I could do another guide, maybe even a little let's play of me doing some rebel missions and how to join the rebel alliance, and it works the same for Imperials, so you'll just have to go to a different recruiter. I'll probably do that. Um, let me know in the comments below if that's what you guys want. You want a little more of a let's play of this? Do you want to see me in the group playing around uh, in galaxies, talking about some of the systems, some of the more advanced features like weapons, armor penetration, rate of fire, resistances, and how armor actually works, and how you know armor isn't always the best solution. And then crafting. Crafting is its own thing. Like all this, all these buildings here are actually uh, food processors. The bulk make food for buffs. So it's got a very in-depth crafting system. So what I'm gonna do is jump off the bike here. I'm gonna take out these, uh, these little blind bunnies. Yes, they are, so creepy. Something about a blind bunny freaks me out. I think I'll take some of these guys out. This is my mission. Oops, yep, I shot the dead log and now I pissed them all off. I'm not sure if I said this in the first video. I think I did, but white is part of the rating system. You see a little white dot there next to their health bars. That's how you know if they're difficult or not. Just quite a few of you guys. Having my morning coffee while killing blind bunny rabbits. I'm I'm kind of a jerk. <laughs> Fix your jerk, dude. Take out this objective. But the more difficult missions are attached to different um, different planets and different areas on planets. So, so you get paid more, but the enemies are harder, and different animal types are on different on the different planets. Oh, here we go. Got another mob of them. Go ahead and take you guys down. You can tab target, or you can just click them. Tab targeting works pretty well if you can't see them because of the brush. Pretty easy mission. Oh, I missed one back there. Keep doing health shot. Health shot is so useful because it, as a for a pistolier or anybody using pistols, it focuses on the red bar just like uh, leg shot for carbines does the green bar and mine shot. And you can pull headshots uh, with a rifle. Pistols are all about rate of fire. Carbines are kind of in the middle, and rifles are very slow, but they're all about uh, hard hitting damage. I mean, the criticals on a rifle are just insane for damage. Uh, you get a lot of one shots with a rifle so well this is going let's take a look at the uh, the skill tree so I want to go bounty hunter that's my thing I want to go pistolier mixed with bounty hunter because I love running pistols so here's my bounty hunter tree now they've got the carbine specialist which I won't be doing this tree it's all about carbines the pistol specialist I will uh, because these these stats actually stack which are kind of nice. You get a, you get some neat abilities. You get a bleed shot. Have your target bleed out. Am I under attack? No. Um, and then investigation is actually being able to take bounty hunter missions. Which are... It's a neat system. Like, you have bounty hunting droids that'll go out and they'll actually find your target for you later on. Um, they'll hunt your target down. Uh, it's, it's just a fun way of making money. And a, and a real RP type deal. I can actually make my money hunting down players, or NPCs. Players, sort of, there was a system back in the day where you could hunt down Jedi. And since Jedi, they're not implemented right now, they've actually been removed from this, from the emulator, but they'll be added, I'm sure, soon. But in the original game, you could bounty hunt Jedi, and Jedi had permadeath. So if you could kill them, uh, their character was gone. But of course, they're freaking Jedi, so killing them isn't isn't the easiest thing to do. You really had to be prepared for it. And the only way a Jedi would show up as a bounty is if they were flaunting the fact that they were a Jedi. If they were using their Jedi abilities, if they were busting out their lightsaber in front of people all the time, uh, and NPCs all the time, then you would get on the, uh, the bounty list. And on the forums in Star Wars Galaxies, when it was live, you would have these bounty hunters with like lists of the Jedi that they've taken out permanently, like they were dead. Now, if a Jedi made it all the way to Master and eventually they died, they would be able to keep playing that character. They wouldn't be able to affect the world, but they could come back as a blue glowy. 
which I always thought was a, a neat touch. Now, of course, you're going to hear things like, if you're new to Star Wars Galaxies, you're going to hear words like CU and NGE. The CU was a combat upgrade. It was a patch they released. It was like a month before what they called the NGE. Um, it was... Uh, the combat upgrade was kind of... Actually, I'll be honest. I kind of liked the combat upgrade. It made it more like a shooter. Like, you would click and you would fire in the game. And it was a little less slow than it is now. So I kind of liked where they were going with it. It needed a lot of patchwork, but it was a cool idea. Actually, I need to turn on my waypoint. Head back to town here. So I'm gonna right click, right click, right click to create a waypoint. Waypoints. So I got my waypoint. I actually had two there, which is now active over here. Now I can go and take more missions if I want to. So we'll run on over there and do that. But anyways, so they came out with this NGE. Now what had happened was this game came out before WoW. Now WoW came out and made stupid amounts of money. Just stupid amounts of money. And Galaxy's Sony, SOE, Sony Online Entertainment said, wow, look at all the money they're making. I want money. I want fat stacks of cash. So why don't we make Star Wars Galaxies just like WoW? And then people will play it and buy all, you know. So what they did was they alienated their entire fan base that was already playing the game, and nobody came over from WoW to play this because they had WoW. There was already a better version of WoW out there. If you wanted to play it, go play that. So they ended up losing like 80% of their game population. They lo I stopped playing. Uh, I hated the new system. It was class-based, so they took out all these cool skills. You had things like you could be the healer, you could be the DPS, you could be the tank, and you know mix and match of those, and that's all it was. It was really sad. Really, really sad. Now, they added a lot of cool features later on, but they never went back to this kind of sandbox, make your own character, tell your own story type of, uh, type of system. Which made me really, which was just, it was bad. It was really bad. So that's what started up Star Wars Galaxy's emulator in the long run. And you're going to hear people lament the fact that they did this change. <sighs> it, it was such a bummer. It really was. And there was the, the big, like, everybody on the forums was saying, hey, you know, turn it back, go back. This is a horrible idea. Um, but they never did. And they... That's what the emulator's back for, though. The emulator's goal is to bring back 100% that version, as I understand it now. I'm not part of the dev team for the emulator. Uh, I'm only promoting them because I enjoy playing it. I really do. But... Um, their goal is to bring back the pre-NGE, the pre-CU Star Wars Galaxies to the way it was, 100%. And then release, as I understand it, release that server code so you can have all the player servers start popping up and then those servers can actually mod it to make the game the way they want. So you could have completely different servers. A lot like how Ultima Online is right now. There's a ton of player-run servers. People like to talk about the legality of that I uh, yeah, it's kind of one of those things like the game is dead. The servers are closed officially. Oh, look at all the flames I got coming out of my <laughs> out of my bike now. The game is dead. Um, so you know who are they taking money from? Like where where is that that idea that you're stealing money from people? Um, I I don't know honestly. Like I don't know how the legality works. They're not making any money off this. Um, the emulator team, they're doing it as a passion project for a love for the game. Some people could say, well, they're taking money from Star, Star Wars The Old Republic Online. Well, really, honestly, nobody is going to play this. Oh, like If you like the Star Old Republic Online and you're willing to play it, you're not going to play Star Wars Galaxies. It's not going to be your type of game, more than likely. Or maybe you'll play both, but you're, they're not taking money. You know, they're not taking food out of the mouth of developers of that title. Uh, they are totally different games. They really are. And in my opinion, this is the... the... the better version. <laughs> I will play this any day over um, the new Star Wars MMO, because it's just too... it's too grindy. It's the missions or go kill 20 of those. I love the storyline aspects, but I don't want to have to grind up toward them. The personal opinion, that's just me. Um, I played up to level, like, I don't know, 25 or 30, and I just got sick of it. And that's coming from somebody who loved Knights of the Old Republic as one of his top top ten favorite games of all time. So, 
<laughs> the fish in the pilot uniform. Digging it. You're doing the Purple Alliance proud. Alright guys, well, I hope this guide has helped out. I know I kind of rambled on a little bit there, but if you want more guides for Star Wars Galaxies, then let me know in the comments below if you want a little more of kind of a let's play of the game, if you're not going to be playing it. Uh, if you're looking to get the game, they sell it really cheap on Amazon, and there are alternate alternative ways, I'm told, of getting a copy of the game. I don't know anything about that, and I don't promote piracy. So, yeah, that's just kind of a thing. Um, please don't mention it on the forums for the community site. If you're looking to play the play with the community, the XP Gamer community, join us this Saturday, actually. Um, the post is on the forums under the news section right now. If you're looking to join the community, I will be playing. We're going to do a Newbie's Night Out game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, pretty much just going to run some missions on Tatooine and you know, help help new players get started, make a little bit of money, kind of show them the ropes, answer some questions. We may have a TeamSpeak server up by then. Uh, we don't really need one for this, though. The ch I love the chat system in this, so it kind of adds to it. Alright guys, well, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe here to the XP Gamers for more modding goodness, and as always, thanks for watching, I will see you guys next time. Goofy smile. <laughs> Later.